Well, hi, train friends. Welcome to the Ozark Midland and Southern Railway. I'm Bill B, and I'm glad you're here. It's a beautiful day outside. Got a little yard work done, and now it's a great time to be in the train room. In this video, the uh, second in my creating a new scene for the OMNS, I'm uh, going to share with you how I went about uh, roughing in the, in the terrain and creating a rocky bluff on which a memorial park scene will be situated. If you've not seen the or watched the first uh, video in the uh, series, you may want to do so at some point. I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Before I go any further, I want to thank all of the channel subscribers for your continued interest in the channel and its content. I particularly like to thank you for having stuck with me while I've been uh, taking some time to work on the railroad which has required me to shut down operations for a good bit. At present, only a very uh, small portion of the line, essentially the small yard and a little beyond, is up and going. At the very end of the video, I hope to share with you a couple new locomotives I received and uh, we'll run a short train uh, through the yard and uh, across the operating portion of the railroad. I know it would be very easy to give up on me and the channel uh, during this time, but let me assure you that progress is being made. <laughs> I am very much hoping that upon completion of the Memorial Park scene, enough work will be, have been accomplished to return the railroad to normal operations. I know no one is more anxious for that than me. I've been very busy, so let me show you what I've been up to. <laughs> After having created the foam board base, as seen in the first video in the series, I began by mixing up a small batch of clay by adding water to the product to create a paper mache mixture. I applied this lightweight mixture to the foam board using a putty knife in my bare hand at times to fill in the large crevices and to create a relatively smooth terrain surface. One of the nice things about cellulose clay is that it has a slower drying time than plaster, giving you more time to work uh, with the product before it sets up. After the cellulose clay I had dried, I next began adding plaster of Paris to the base structure using a putty knife. Then, using the same putty knife, I uh, began to carve and shape the plaster. I had to work quickly as the plaster begins to dry and harden in a matter of just minutes. As the plaster dries, it steadily becomes more difficult to carve. You kind of learn to work with the plaster, taking advantage of its unique qualities as it sets up. The rock I am trying to model has many fissures and layers. During the course of working, working with the plaster, I set in place a piece of foam concrete retaining wall obtained from Scenic Express. I then worked the plaster up and around it. Once the plaster had dried, I proceeded to set some small stones in the bed of a runoff ditch that ran along the base of the bluff. I next saturated the stones with a 91% isopropyl alcohol solution to break the surface tension, which helped to keep the small stones in place when I applied some matte medium that would hold and lock the, the stones where I had placed them. To get a sense of how uh, things would look, at the same time I was placing the stones in, into the uh, 
the ditch along the bluff, I also began to apply some topsoil in certain areas, as you can see in the, in the, in the, uh, the photograph, using the same techniques as I did with the stones. I then decided to cover the rock work with a light coat of Golden's high flow acrylic titanium white paint using my airbrush. I did this because the raw plaster really soaks up the paint. And the overspray of titanium white sealed the plaster and left me with a uniform palette in which to work. After the uh, titanium uh, white paint had dried, I wanted to uh, darken the uh, cracks and crevices and layers of rock work. To do that, I brushed on some powdered black tempera paint. You may have seen me uh, use this same technique in a previous video. After applying a rather thick uh, layer of uh, powdered temper paint over the work, I uh, then removed as much of it as I could from the face of the bluff with a soft, wide brush. Then it was time to hose down the rock work with water in a spray bottle. I did this to further cleanse the face of the uh, rock work um, and allow the black temper paint to run down the cracks and crevices. This is where I learned that the, uh, the, the ditch along the, uh, the bottom of the bluff truly does work. After the water had dried, there are a couple of places where I felt like I'd washed a little bit too much of the temper away, so I replaced it. Now it was time to begin applying some color to our rock work. For this part of the project, I chose to use some Tamiya uh, acrylic paints that I diluted by 50% with isotopal alcohol. To help me with the uh, colors, I had some uh, rock samples as well as my inspiration photo. Honestly, it wasn't long after I started that I recognized that I should have both uh, diluted my Tamiya paints further with isotopal alcohol and uh, made my paint mixtures uh, lighter to start with. I wanted uh, my colors to be opaque, uh, but not as opaque as they turned out to be. With the first application of paint having dried, I felt it was time to pull out my airbrush. Here I am bending down just to let you know that I am wearing a respirator, and I think it's important, especially indoors. I'm using the uh, airbrush to help me uh, lighten the colors of the rock face. Uh, in a uniform kind of way. I then brought out some uh, lighter gray uh, paint uh, and using a brush highlighted uh, some of the flat surfaces and the front, the front surfaces of the, uh, of the rock work in order to give the rock some, uh, some depth. Uh, I went kind of back and forth using both the uh, brush paints as well as uh, my airbrush to uh, try to achieve the, uh, the tones that I was looking for in the, in the rock work. Not only in the gray paint, but also in the, uh, that yellowish, orangish color kind of rock. It took repeated attempts to, uh, to gradually, you know, lighten the colors. Here at a fine mist spray bottle, I'm applying a highly diluted uh, blackish brown wash over the rock face. Then I come back with uh, just pure 
uh, 91% isotopal alcohol to try to wash some of that off the face of the, uh, the rock. And I just kept tweaking the, uh, the rock face and the soil until I got uh, the look I was trying to achieve. It took some time, but at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about it. With that said, in reflection, I believe I should have done two things differently. I would have used less black powdered tempera paint and would have diluted the Tamiya acrylic paints far more than I initially did. Well, we learn by doing. So how about we go to the Susannaville yard? I have a pair of locomotives I'd like to share with you. Well, this is the yard. At present, it's about 10 feet long. It is, a, it is small, but so is the railroad. You can see uh, the yard has uh, power by the two uh, lit bumpers. I mentioned that because uh, due to the work being done on the railroad, only, uh, only the yard and a few feet beyond uh, actually have power to the track. Here's Rocky Top Mountain, bridge over Cropperhead Creek, and now we come to the tunnel that passes through White Rock Mountain, and power ends shortly thereafter. So here are my two new Missouri Pacific MP15 DCs. They are MTH Rail King models. They were made available as a custom run for the public delivery track. They really are good looking models. In preparation for this, uh, this segment of the video, I uh, programmed each of the uh, two locomotives uh, individually and then pulled out my uh, DCS user's manual to make sure that it came time to lash them up it, as, to make them one engine, so to speak, I, I could get it right the first time. The manual really comes in handy.
Well, trained friends, I think that's going to be a wrap. I hope you will stay tuned for part three in the Memorial Park series. I'm going to uh, lay down some grass, weeds, bushes, and some trees. So until we meet again on the OMNS, do take care. And remember, the OMNS is pulling for you. This is Bill B. Bye now. <laughs>